It's a joke, by the way. All right, 458-DOG is the number. You've got it on Patriot's Lament right here on KFAR. We go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Roger again. I hope you don't mind. Oh, it's going to cost you, Roger. Okay, well, uh, you can bill me. All right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was uh, I was thinking about um, what got me started on all this uh, liberty talk. And, uh, you know, it was when I was a kid, I, as, well, as a teenager, I lived in Arkansas. And um, when I was there, I was constantly, constantly harassed by the police. Just constantly. You never did. I wasn't doing anything wrong. But um, but if a police officer pulled behind me in his car, I absolutely knew that I was getting pulled over. I mean, in traffic, if one pulled up behind me, I'd see him on his radio. He he was calling my plates in, and he was going to pull me over, and he was going to search my car no matter what I said or did, and I didn't dare tell him, no, you can't search my car. And I mean, I didn't even realize that I could do that. I thought, oh, he wants to search my car. He's a police officer. Uh, oh, well, what can I do? You know, there's, and I think that's what most people really think. They, I mean, a police officer says it. We better do it. You know, and uh, that's why I came to Alaska. I wanted to, I wanted to be a little bit freer. And um, you know, I come up here. And the police officers are definitely a lot better. They're definitely a lot better than they are down there. And I don't have a problem with them up here. But you, you, I realize this this place isn't any freer than than it is down there. I mean, you got a, a borough that just uh, just is tyrannical. It doesn't matter if you want something; they're going to enforce it on you, like the like the road service area issue i mean they're they're trying to tell you that you can't take care of your own road you know or um or just you know i'm moving outside the borough to get away from this stuff and uh i'm told that oh you know, the borough might might expand and engulf us also and uh i mean what can you do about that you know there's i mean you're trying to be a little bit more free and you get that you're being chased around yeah, you know that's an interesting point. Um, that that in my mind goes back to uh, the ratification of the Constitution. There were a lot of people in states in the Midwest, which was you know the western extent, who um, as after the Constitution was ratified and they continued adding states, there were a lot of farmers out there who who didn't know and didn't care right until it started to affect them because suddenly they were brought into this tax jurisdiction, and so people kept on pushing west right. You know, go west, young man. Why did people go west for opportunity? Because there was more there was more freedom to the west. And then, you know, we've run out of west, right? In 1959, we ran out of west. Thank you, statehood. You know, I, sometimes I wonder if we, and I say we, I wasn't here, I wasn't born, uh, if the people of Alaska made a mistake by opting for statehood in 1959. What do you... Yeah, well, I mean, you, you know, you can go you can go all back and forth on that. Of course, the... I, you know, I have my own opinion. Other other people have theirs, but uh, well, of, of course, course the, the, the original idea of states is that they would be um, basically a country unto themselves, right? Right. And there would be this federation, this loose federation of states. Um, actually, the, that's why they use the word federal instead of the word central. Is it's the Latin root word is is a um, basically a forum where people come to talk about things that are not particularly binding. Uh, but, of course, it was never a federation from the first day. And plus the fact that we've seen the, quote, federal government expand so much, we really truly now have a national government. When, right. When yeah, we don't, we don't have states. We have, you know, we have these little boundaries that <coughs> bureaucrats can play in that, are, that happen to be different. But you have uniform law between all the states. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriot's Lament. You're on the air. Hello, this is Charles. Charles, what's on your mind? In classical political economy, Karl Marx and Adam Smith agreed uh, means of production should be held as close to the people as possible. That's from Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations. I think that's why it's the, the hard to teach people about economics. It's counterintuitive, and it's all 
I bl- I'll blame the conservatives too, mainly for not being uh, strong enough to vote for Dick Randolph in 1982. And uh, that's my libertarian speech. <laughs> Thanks for the show. Thank you. Can I? Uh, I have Ron Paul's uh, Liberty Defined book. You were talking about the definition of liberty earlier, Steve. Can I read his definition out of that book? Absolutely. So Ron Paul says, Liberty means to exercise human rights in any manner a person chooses, so long as it does not interfere with the exercise of the rights of others. This means, above all else, keeping government out of our lives. Only this path leads to the unleashing of human energies that, that build civilization, provide security, generate wealth, and protect the people from systematic rights violations. In this sense, only liberty can truly ward off tyranny, the great and eternal foe of mankind. That's, that's what Ron Paul thinks liberty is. All right. You know, I, we're coming close to the end of the show here. We've got about five minutes left. And I, I, I just I want to really so – one of the things I've kind, kind of been chewing around in my mind is this idea of laws. Do we need any more laws? When we elect somebody and, and send them to uh, either the borough assembly or we send them down to Juneau or we send them to Washington, D.C., it seems like they feel this responsibility all of a sudden, like the second they swear to uphold the Constitution, which everybody does at every level of government, they, they all of a sudden feel this responsibility to just go and start passing new laws. Is that what we're sending them there to do? Well, that, you know, that's uh, you, you use the term laws. There's actually two kinds of laws. There's private law and there's public law, right? And so private law are the rules that you make uh, for how your property will be used, right? you being the rightful owner. And public law is uniform law that, that everybody falls under. And the, the Constitution was originally sold, you know, and it, I, I think falsely sold, as protecting private law. The states did not want to give up uh, their right to make their own law. And so, so that's what the Tenth Amendment is all about. It says the states can still make their own laws. Um, and beyond that, within the states, the states gave most of the lawmaking power to the individual through contract law, right? When you sell something or when you when you work with somebody through business, you're creating law via a contract. It says, I promise to deliver X, you know, for exchange of whatever. And as the state has grown and increased the number of public laws, that has necessarily come at the expense of private law. So when we say, you know, the state has taken control of our lives um, by making these laws, what we've really said is that the state has taken the ability for us to make laws based on our moral code and and our ability to contract with whoever we want, and they have become a, a third party in every action we do, right? So so the expansion of public law is, is the real problem, but of course, the Constitution has a mechanism for that. The state Constitution has a mechanism for that. So the camel's nose was under the tent from day one. 458-TALK is the number. We go back to your phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Allie. Allie, what's on your mind? Well, I was just wondering how you guys feel about that state. I forget which one it is. I don't know if it's Iowa or Ohio somewhere where now the police can go in your house. Yeah, in Indiana. 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 Okay. Well, tell me this. What's going to keep a criminal from going down to the local uh, <laughs> shop and buying a, a, a cheap police uniform and a badge, knock on the door and say, i got to search your house, and shoot you or whatever i mean you know they're leaving themselves wide open for a big mistake what do you think what about the criminals who are paid by the state to do that already <laughs> you have to ask yourself, well we got plenty you... already I mean, you know, we don't need any more <laughs> we, yeah, have, we have official ones do you have the right to protect your home well no do, the constitution do you... yes i do well is it even the constitution, Not only the that constitution gave it to you? or morally no yeah. morally i got the right to protect myself exactly that's the end of the story exactly where does that where does that right come from ellie that comes from God, okay, so our if, Creator. If you've got that right, then no matter who passes a law telling you you don't have that right, you can disregard that law, right? I, would, I, would, I know I am. Right, yeah, obedience is always a choice. Um, exactly. And, but, right, and what, you're, what we're going to find in this country is, is what is the moral rectitude of people. Um, and I, I don't know the answer to that, but we're going to find out what it is in the next few years. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks for the call. Is it worse that Iowa, right? Indiana. Indiana, Indiana passed a law to make that um, something that's legal for law enforcement to do, or be like our state where they just do it anyway? Actually, it wasn't a pass. It wasn't a law passed. It was a Supreme Court ruling. Irregardless of my point, my point is that they do that everywhere yeah. already. It happened to me uh, three weeks ago. 
I was outside and I turned around. There was uh, police officers in my house. They came through three no trespassing signs to be in there. Was, what were they doing in my house? And when I asked them to leave, they told me I had to. Well, what it, what it was is I had a fire going, and I'm talking like uh, campfire size. So that gave them the right to be in my house. I didn't even know they were there until I went inside. I was like, whoa, what are you guys doing here? I said, you realize you had to walk through three no trespassing signs to come talk to me? And they say, yeah, well, we don't really care about that. It's the third time they've come onto my property without, and this time they came in my house without even knocking or anything. So who needs a law if nobody's going to stand up for anybody and nobody's going to stand up for what's right? The law is whatever is forced down our throat. Well, that, that's on that note. Uh, wow. <laughs> Closing comments, Josh? Uh, well, I just wanted to say something quick from Samuel Adams, a little bit why we three or four, why we're here today and every Saturday and what Steve does. This is exactly why a quote of what we do, what our objective is. He says, it does not require a majority to prevail but rather an irate, tireless minority keen to set brush fires in the people's minds. That's all we're trying to do. Get that brush fire burn, make you think. Do you have a permit for that brush fire in your mind? <laughs> Hopefully there's not PM 2.5 from that brush fire. You better call the thought police, because you, my friend of Cree, have you've just committed to thought, Brian. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, remember, we are here every Saturday, 10 o'clock. For Patriots Lament, and if you did not get a chance to get through today on the phones, you can send us an email uh, at the radio station. Uh, just uh, go ahead and click on. You can do Steve Floyd at KFAR660.com, and we'll get your comments on the air next week. We will see you right here on KFAR. Up next, it's Health Talk on Local Talk Radio. We are KFAR.